your past is not your future unless you want it to be. He said, if you just keep studying your past, you'll become an expert of living in the past, not in your future. Hey, everybody, welcome to Conversations with John and Lisa. We are so glad that you're joining us. If you're new to Conversations, this is something Lisa and I have done several hundred times. We've sat behind these mics and we just feel like we want to help you in your journey with Jesus Christ. We want to help you with your life situations you're going through. We're in our 60s, both of us, and we just love being able to walk you through some of the terrible mistakes we've made or we don't want you we don't want you to do the same thing to repeat our patterns so anyway that's what we're going to talk about today is cycles and so before we jump into today's very important topic we want to remind you if you have been listening please rate review and subscribe to the show now what does this do this helps other people come on because remember at one time you were a first-time listener maybe you heard about it through that and if you review it you might get it read on air like I'm Just Me is about to be read. I'm Just Me says, I've recently started listening to this podcast, but it's already given me so much insight and enlightenment on and about my walk with God. I am a widow and a mom of seven. Wow. God bless you. Wow. These discussions are broken down enough for me to transfer them to my little flock, and I'm glad you see it that way. I just love it. Okay. Thanks, John and Lisa. I just me. You're just a hero. That's, yeah, you that's are amazing. a hero to me. Okay, so I'm really excited about this topic. I we too. are talking about breaking cycles, and people will actually have patterns of repetitive cycles. They'll just keep doing the same thing over and over again. And they're like the old Steely Dan song, "You Back Jack, back, Jack yeah, Do that, It Again." That's about gambling, but it, yes, no, it's about a lot of things. If you remember in the song, yeah. it's about cycles. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So why? Why do people continue to repeat the very things they don't want to repeat? What is the cause? Because it ends up, John, we've seen it. They end up sabotaging the very things they want to build, create relationships and things like that. I'm going to read to you a quote from Dr. Henry Cloud. He's Mr. Boundaries Man. He says, what does it feel like to be where you are right now? And I, I think it He's asking each and every one of us that question. Take some time to really reflect, feel, smell, and imagine your current state. Then look to your future. Can you imagine taking everything you are feeling right now with you? Let that dissatisfaction you now feel fuel your movement for improvement. So I want to ask everyone who's listening today, do you feel like you are trapped in a cycle? To answer what Dr. Cloud asked us, do you want to bring forth bitterness, anger, sorrow, depression, offense? Do you want to bring those things into your future? Because the truth is that you really are probably not going to move into the future that you want to see happen if you're trying to carry all those weights and sins with you. So today we're going to talk about breaking that cycle and taking back some of the territory the enemy has stolen. You know, Lisa, God says in Deuteronomy 2 8, you have circled this mountain long enough. Yes. So all of us have mountains in our lives yeah. that we seem to just keep circling, and it's because we haven't broken the cycle. And a lot of times those cycles are there because of us not addressing them. Yeah. And I do feel like people will live more in the past then dream their way into the future. And I think a lot That's of times, really I know for me, uh, I kept going back like, God, why am I this way? Why did this happen? Why, you know, when this happened, this happened. And, and I kept looking back, looking back, looking back. So what was happening was I was going back because I was looking back because where you look is where you're going to go. And so people keep going around the same mountain over and over again, because it is familiar. But if you want to break a cycle, you're going to have to address those things and move beyond that. So the first one we're going to talk about is stopping the cycle. Can you just camp on something profound that you just said? What was that? Where you're looking is where you're going to go. Yes. So, All right. So is there a reason that Paul said, I forget those things which are behind and, and press toward yep. mm-hmm. the mark, yep. the prize of the high calling of God. So in other words, what Paul was saying is if I keep looking at the past, I'm going to stay in the past. That's right. But if I look at the high call, 
and the high calling is Jesus Christ. You know, God's number one goal for every one of his children, I mean, this we can say is to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's his number one goal. If you want to put all goals and and you in, in, in together and you want to say what is the number one that God wants for you? He wants you to be conformed. So the high calling he's talking about is to be conformed because he actually says that in and, that and, chapter. You know, people that would be like, wait, I don't want to be conformed. He's talking about you being transformed and conformed into his image. Yeah. Who he created you to do. And and again, I do believe becoming who God created us to be is one of the number one ways to break a cycle. So just one more thing. Yeah, I believe no, this absolutely. is why the writer of Hebrews yeah. tells us, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So again, the number one way to break a cycle is to realize if you keep looking at what you're doing and just stay there, keep focused on that, you're going to keep repeating it. Yeah. If you just keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're not going to get a different result. result. And so if you find yourself, I'm listening to you, John and Lisa, and yes, this year is just like last year and last year was like the year before and I am trapped in a cycle, then we're going to invite you to do something to disrupt the cycle, to actually bring forth some changes. It could be a relationship cycle. It could be a mindset. It could be attitudes. It could be behaviors. John, have you ever had a cycle? I, I feel like I feel like I'm always the one with the uh, bad examples on these kind of things. <laughs> have you ever had a cycle where you felt trapped? Well, yeah. I mean, if, if we go back to in the 1980s, the worst cycle for me was the trap of pornography. I couldn't get away from it. And um, I just kept going back to it when I felt lonely, when I felt depressed, when I felt even and we were married, uh, needy. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I just, I just was like, yeah. it was instant gratification. So I had to realize, okay, wait a minute. I'm looking for a quick instant gratification. And I had to realize, okay, number one, Jesus said, you look at a woman to lust after you've committed adultery already yeah. in her heart. Okay. That, that was the yeah, first in, thing that really got heart, my not her heart in, in your heart. Yeah, yeah. In your heart. And that's the first thing that got yeah. my attention. The yeah. second thing I got my, that got my attention is why does this reoccur? If I already know this now, why do I keep doing this? And I had to address that. Well, what I realized was that there had to be a disruption. There had to be, I got uncomfortable enough with that to where I said, there has to be a change. And yeah. that caused me to go on a four day fast to seek God to say, this has got to go. And what do I need to do to get it to go? And that's when God revealed to me what a lot of men have gotten help with. We have our course on on the app yeah, called Born Free, Born Free mm -hmm. uh, the Killing Kryptonite book. And so many men have come up and said, man, I got free because it took a wrestling. Nobody was talking about it, Lisa, to us. Yeah. And things grow in the, they grow in the silence, those kind of shameful things. Yeah. You know, I know that uh, God told me, he said, your past is not your future unless you want it to be. He said, if you just keep studying your past, you'll become an expert of living in the past, not in your future. So if you're there and you're trying to make sense out of something that maybe started this cycle in your life, then you know what? It's time to stop looking for those life-giving things among the dead things of your past. It's, it's time for you to begin to lift your eyes and begin to look for what Jesus has done. Another cycle that's not quite as horrific is I remember whenever we got into disagreement and you said, I, I don't want to talk anymore. I would remember, I would follow you yes, around the house yes. and um, keep pursuing until you saw things my way, which that was a cycle that it took a friend, a, a marriage counselor named Chip Judd, yeah. who came in and addressed these things and said, okay, John, we got to, we got, we got to deal with this. And so, um, yeah, well, and we both had the cycle of when we were talking, neither of us were listening to what the other person was saying. We were preparing right. our own arguments. And so, so then he, he said, we have to repeat, repeat everything that your wife said before you bring up. Another and I point. had to do that with you, too, because I did it as well. OK, so we talked about some cycles. Now, you guys know we've all had cycles. You don't have to feel the same. But we're going to talk about the three different ways to disrupt the cycle. And the first one is disrupt by discomfort. Listen, when things get truly uncomfortable in your life, that is a disruption. When you finally come to the place where you're like, 
I'm not okay with constantly being uh, depressed, oppressed, angry, whatever it is. And you know, John, this was one of my first scriptures but, I used to like but to the preach key out of. Is discomfort? Yeah, discomfort. You got to be discomfortable with it. If you're if you're yeah. comfortable, because a lot of people are comfortable in their in their cycle. A but, lot God, of, but God will actually okay. My experience has been that God makes things uncomfortable, so he becomes my comfort. And that's God yes. helping us, but a lot of people stay comfortable in their cycles. Okay, and so that's why God says to Esau, Esau. Yep. He, said, he said, when you become restless, restless, in other words, when you're fed up with this, yep. he said, then you shall break his yoke from your neck. Right. So yokes get broken. Remember, the anointing destroys the yoke yep. of bondage. Yep. Yokes get broken when we get disgusted with being discomfortable. We become restless. Or or the cost. Like, okay, for you, the pornography, the cost was going to be too high. We could have lost our marriage. For me, watching my children uh, repeat my fears was, uh, it was, it was too, I was, uh, no, I'm not okay with that. Yep. And there came to this place where I was like, I am not willing to live in this place any longer. Right. And I think some people out there, you, are you willing to live with discomfort or are you willing to move beyond a pattern, a cycle of constant, repeated discomfort? So we can be safe to say discomfort yep. precedes breakthrough. Yep. Now, what we all need is breakthrough. Yep. And breakthrough is a biblical term. Yep. He is the God of the breakthroughs. It actually says yep. that in scripture. So breakthrough does not come until you become restless. Yeah. So first of all, it's okay. Be disgusted at your cyclical behavior, not disgusted with you, yeah. your character. You are a child of God. You have been recreated. You become disgusted with your repeated behavior. So separate you from your behavior and then get disgusted with your behavior. Right. And I know for me, that's the way it went. I went like, okay, that's it. I have I have gone around this mountain long enough. Yep. I've watched my mother go around this mountain. Yep. I've watched my father go around this mountain. I don't want my children going and around boy, the mountain. And did you change? Yeah. And, and there comes a place. And I want, I want you to hear me. The things you don't face now are not going to get easier to face in the future. It is always more expedient. I love how the Bible says now faith is. There is something right now in your life that if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I'm driving in the car, but there is something in your life that if you sit down with the Holy Spirit and say, I am not willing to continue in this pattern of cycle of destruction mm -hmm. and just defeat, and I am, I'm refusing, I'm refusing to live with this, then that can change in a moment. So it says, when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke or break his yoke from off your shoulders. Sometimes people are looking to other people to do the very thing God wants to anoint you to do. It doesn't say when you go restless, your husband will take the yoke off. It doesn't say when you go restless, your wife will. It doesn't say when you go restless, the pastor will. It says when you grow restless, you will lean into God. All right. So Lisa, we just talked about the first approach and I'm looking at our notes and I'm realizing we can't continue this. We're going to, we're going to do part two on this one because yeah. there are three steps, yeah. I believe, to breaking a cycle. Yeah. One is discomfort. And we've talked about that today on today's podcast. I want to give everybody time to really pray about this, think about it, and then come back to our next podcast. And then we're going to talk about the next two steps. And then we're going to pray for people to be free. Yeah, that and, sounds and, exciting. And again, while we're talking about the discomfort, I want you to weigh out some of the things that we said, like, do you see a cycle in your family? Do you see a cycle in your finances? Do you see a cycle in maybe you go to a church and then you leave a church and then, or do you see a cycle in your relationship, your friendships, your dating? What is a cycle? We want you to identify yeah. that cycle yeah. and then decide you're not okay with living in a constant state of discomfort with that. So good. Yeah. So we're going to close there. And we just want to remind you again, please rate, review, and subscribe to the program. Also, if you haven't done it already, download Messenger X. Just go to the App Store, Google Play, type in Messenger X, and you will see it. I mean, it has got, I think, over 15,000 five-star ratings. People have really been getting ministered to by it. 
We put a lot of research, a lot of time into it to see your life change. So download it, start enjoying it. There is no charge for using it. And until next time, this has been Conversations with John and Lisa. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Conversations with John and Lisa Bevere. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and rate this podcast wherever you love to listen. Also, if you haven't already, go right ahead and download Messenger X to hear more content from John and Lisa Bevere and other great messengers. Again, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time on Conversations with John and Lisa.